Hello, everyone. <clears throat> this is one of those times when I'm counting on the fact that uh, YouTube has not been working very well for us in the live stream to hide the fact that I haven't cleaned the bathroom. <sighs> Hopefully the uh, uh, intense pixelization we've been getting hides it a little bit. Anyway, uh, the kittens are all running around the house and somehow today they discovered the bathtub. And that means it's time for bathtub ball. And they've been in here playing, but there's something way more exciting going on out there. And besides, I don't want to scandalize all of you with my bathtub. As you can see, uh, you put a ping pong ball in an empty bathtub and it is so much fun for cats and kittens. Something we used to do more of when we had a, a better shaped bathtub for it, I think. But uh, I can't get in close to these guys in here because, like I said, I don't want you to see if it is dirty. Oh, but I did want you to see Millet playing nicely and calmly with these kittens, or trying to. And, of course, then I turn around and he's halfway up a cactus, so that doesn't really work. <sighs> At any rate... Um, as you can see, all seven of Port's Oranges are out and Millet's out at the moment. He's probably not gonna be able to be out for much longer because he's getting a little too excited about all of it. As you can see, that's not, you know, he can do that and it's all right, but we don't wanna let him do too much of it really. So he's been trying really, really hard to play with the oranges and they're still a little bit skeptical of him. And every time that he tries to play with them, they'll give him a little kiss or a swat. But I think they're coming around real fast, and it's obvious to me, at least, that he's definitely trying to play. And he doesn't seem too put off by the fact that they don't really want him to play right now. So I've got high hopes that, you know, given enough time, he's probably going to get it figured out. Or they're probably going to get it figured out. Mutually, I suppose. Hey, Millie. Millie, hi, buddy. Why don't you come over here and play with us? instead of everybody going in the bathroom repeatedly. Whoa. So that was a bit of a tussle. Well, not even really. I think he just surprised Ant, and so Ant hissed at him, and then he went away to climb the tree. The one thing, the one activity he probably shouldn't be doing. <clears throat> but hey, we're gonna put him away in just a minute and talk about the even bigger news, which is that our new kittens have names. Oh boy, and I'm gonna embarrass myself too, because I didn't prepare for this. Uh, and I don't, I'm not going to be able to get all the names. I might have to ask somebody to help. Uh, but we're going to go in there in just a minute and see the new kittens, and we will discuss their names. <laughs> Millie is just running around. The screen is, is hiding some of the mess in the room, but uh, not all of it. I guess I need more screens or less mess or just to put things away, perhaps. Hey, Mila, do you recognize these guys on the computer? It looks like most of the others aren't quite as offended as Ant just was. Uh, you know, like I said, everybody's learning to play a little bit more, and I think he's still surprising them. There's still a lot of learning to be done, but they are all making what I would call fast progress uh, at being friends with Millet, which makes me happy and surely makes Millet happy. He has been missing having his brothers to beat up on, and now he's working on getting seven new ones to beat up on. Oh, and surprise a little bit here and there. Okay, hey bud, hey, it's all right, it's all right, reboot. Here, keep playing with your ball, all right?
He's just playing, Hal. You're the one that was poked, peeking in at him. Pay no attention to the cat behind the curtain. But hey, oh hi. Hi. Oh, there's something going on back there. Maybe we should pay a little attention to the cat behind the curtain. Oh, I heard a hiss. Are you getting yourself trapped back here, Millie? You know you don't have to come back here. He's trying so hard to play, and I, I do keep hearing all these hisses. Oh, see, that was nice, though. They're definitely going to end up having good interactions, and they're at the point now where I'm, I'm getting less and less worried about managing every minute of it because nobody's getting too offended. They really want to get this puffball off of this toy. Are you hissing at it? Oh, you have been getting that off. Look at that. He's been ripping the fur out of it. Look at this bald spot now, and it looks just like me. Oh, he's growling, too. He's growling at it. He gets very possessive of his toys sometimes. Ant, you trying to tell it something? Can you hear that little tiny growl? Oh, how much of this are you going to end up eating, though? That's, that's a little too much, buddy. I'm going to put this away, actually, because now it's coming apart. And nobody needs that. So I'm just going to take this, buddy. This thing's lasted quite a while. You might remember seeing it down in the main room. It's a very nice toy, but it looks like Ant is probably the end of it now, at least this part of it. <sighs> it had a good run. The cardboard part is probably still just fine to hang around. It makes a nice sort of contemplation station. All right, Millet, we got to put you in your room so we can go see some kittens. Oh, yeah, every time with the ant, ant gets very uh, concerned, I guess, or has a big reaction. Seems like he's all right, though. All right, Millie, let's go. You can come back out later when we're ready to supervise and maybe when you've had a bit of a breather because you're getting a little too excited, pal. All right, let these kids do what they do. Let's go see some other kittens real quick. There we go, right on him. Oh, watch your tail. Right now. We're going to hear him yelling for a while now. All right, so let's see the kittens real quick if we can. That's true. Um, Here's Port and her little tiny babies. And as you can see, they are all um, nursing. 
in, uh, in air quotes, maybe. Um, in that they spend a lot of time nursing on her, but so far the weight she doesn't show them actually getting very much from her. And I don't know why, because everything works. The kittens work, she works. Um, and so it should all be working. And I just, I don't have the slightest idea, but it does mean that I'm still up every four to five hours feeding them myself by tube, which I've gotten to work pretty quick, but it still takes, uh, takes me about half an hour each time, give or take a bit. So it is pretty time consuming and getting up in the middle of the night's not the most fun. But we do what we can do. So uh, let's see here. I'm definitely going to have to, almost certainly going to have to ask for some help. Uh, let's see. Because I didn't, I haven't really checked the names too much at all. I'm still kind of thinking of them by numbers. <laughs> uh, but let's see what we can do real quick um, to go through the names and just get a little bit of a view of them. And then uh, what I'll do is we'll wrap this up and we'll see if I can't do one of those zombie streams too to give everybody a little bit of a better view so so this is the first kitten this is our little girl the only girl in the group number one and i believe we named her paisley right and you guys again are gonna have to correct me if i don't get the names right Okay, sweetheart, there you go. So that's the one girl in the group, little Paisley. You can see that she's a gray tabby with uh, white markings, which is, you know, the you get the one gene for the gray tabby and you get a separate gene to add the white to it. So that's the way that she's set up. Then next up we have number two, who is uh, Basket Weave, I believe, is named Basket Weave. I don't know what exactly I'm going to call him yet, but there's a lot of good things you can do with basket weave. A little tiny basker. And uh, he's obviously a little bit upset about being held in my cold hands, but that's our little boy. And as you can see, he's a gray tabby. He's, a, he's basically mini mom. He's got the exact same color and, uh, and uh, stripiness as she does. And I think when he gets bigger, he's going to look exactly like she does. So that is, uh, that's number two, basket weave, uh, a boy. Then the third and fourth are hard for me to tell apart by looking. I think we discussed this before. That's these two that are brown tabbies, uh, sort of like our faculty, Eddie is a brown tabby. And you can see they look very similar. So telling them apart at a glance is very tricky, but if you pick each of them up, it's not so tricky because one of them weighs a full ounce lighter than the other. So this is the light one. I think I'm going out of order because the light one is number four. And uh, the light one is named Herringbone. At least I think that's right. Again, somebody can tell me. Um, and so this is little Herringbone. And Herringbone is the tiniest cat in the entire group. And he uh, he also has he's been, the way he's been eating, he's been getting very bloated. I think he needs to do a little more pooping. As you can see here, let's show you how round he's looking right now. So we're working on that. I try to help him poop every time, but he just he just yells and yells and yells about it. He doesn't want to do it. Well, look at how round he is. Yes, you're very round, little boy. Oh, and it looks like he's lost his umbilical cord too, which is good. Those uh, for cats, the mom sort of chews the umbilical cord down to about an inch, inch or two long, and then it just hangs on there. And uh, after a while, then it just falls off, dries up, and falls off. So uh, apparently, they've hit that point already where those are starting to fall off. That's the way that works. Uh, so this would be number three then, which is uh, Chevron, or Chevy, or whatever you want to call him. Chevron is the uh, other of the brown tabbies. And you can see he's still got a little bit of his umbilical cord hanging on there. It looks very similar otherwise. Say hi, Chev. Okay, so that's Chevy, or Chevron. Ronnie, or I don't know what we're going to do about names. And then uh, the last one, of course, is number five is um, Argyle. Argyle, look at that. I got all the names on my first try. Argyle have a little bit of a blep from being just pulled right off of that nipple. Oh, buddy, it's not like you're missing much, is it? 
Yeah. So that's little Argyle. And as you can clearly see, he is a tuxy. Um, you can see a little bit of the, the stripiness in his black fur, but um, almost all black cats actually do have some, you know, uh, stripes in their fur. It's just, you can only see it in certain lighting usually. So I don't know if that makes him, I don't know, more of a tabby tuxy, but I would just call him a tuxy. And that's the way I'm gonna go with it. And I'm sure as he gets older, that the little stripiness is gonna become even less apparent. He is a big complainer. He's also just a, so soft and sweet. He really wants to get back to what he was doing. Though. Oh, I got to show you before he does, though. Did you notice he's got a little, like, soul patch going on his chin? It's too cute. Reminds me of a certain fern. <laughs> okay, pal. There we go. So that's the group, and that's the names. Look at that. I actually got them all. I can't believe I did it. Uh, let's see if I can do them again in order. So, uh, first we have our girl, Paisley, then Basket Weave, then, uh, let's see, I think Chevy is this one, and Herringbone is this one, and then finally Argyle. Hey, look at that, I did do it. Uh, Paisley, Basket Weave, Chevy, Herringbone, Argyle, and Mom is of course, uh, uh, has a name, which uh, is Loom. Yes, Loom. That's it, Loom. I got it. I got it. You don't have to tell me. I got it. And Loom, by the way, is incredibly sweet, and she gets concerned if I'm holding her kittens and they're yelling, but she trusts me, and she'll come over and look at them, but if I'm holding them and, I, you know, she, we see each other, you know, she's like, you got that, right? And uh, And she's fine with it, so that works out pretty well. And uh, other than that, she doesn't really mind at all. I should let me pick them up and play with them all day long as long as they don't start screaming about it. So she gets very concerned whenever they make noises, but she also, you know, she'll go out and sit on the other side of the room and hang out and she's fine with that. And it's a good time, which is uh, worth uh, mentioning to people, I think, because I've seen some people talking about the fact that she's out of the box a lot and that the kittens are left alone in the box quite often. Uh, but first off, I don't think that it's any more often than it has been. Uh, and, you know, for other mom cats, and I also don't think that it, she does it any more than she should. If they start meowing, she comes running back. So uh, she's really got it all handled and is doing it very appropriately, as far as I can tell. They certainly, it's not lack of access to her that is causing them any trouble. She's, uh, she gives them exactly as much access as they would need. I do see, I don't know why we're talking about the tube feeding, but yeah, I do tube feeding, not bottle feeding. And I, I, it's because I feel like tube feeding is way, way safer than bottle feeding. Um, and it's also way, way faster and easier and you make sure that they get enough food. So it's, it's better in almost every way. That's why we do it that way. And, uh, and goodness knows, I would probably never get to leave this room if I tried to get them all to bottle feed. I'd just be in here all day. So uh, that's another thing that's good about it. I see, is Chev starting to open his eyes? No, so eyes usually, I'm sure everybody knows by now, and eyes usually open, we figure, around 10 days. And I don't see any sign that these are starting yet. They do get, you know, they've got kind of like this eye shadow going on that can be very deceiving. But I don't see any little sparkle that would show that it's even starting to open. So that's all that's going on there. Was that Chev? I don't know if that was Chev or the other one. Let's take a look here. Let's look at both of them real quick. A little sparkle there. Uh, I don't think so. Again, I think it's just the eyeshadow and his little line. So there you go. Uh, let's see, what else can I say that's been uh, maybe worrying people? They do, and she, she, mom is clearly taking good care of them and keeping them well pooped and, you know, taking care of their pee and stuff like she does. But uh, we do still get a lot of poop on her little uh, blankets, more than I think we've seen for a lot of recent mom cats. And some of that is because I think they're having a little bit of bad poops from the KMR. That's exactly what we would expect, so nothing to worry about. 
Um, and then I think the other, you know, might be maybe she doesn't keep up with it quite the same way that, say, you know, Flower did, who was a, an obsessive groomer of her kittens. Um, but she's doing fine enough, and uh, I just change the blankets whenever I can. You see, I actually put down a stack of them. Oh, well, we're getting towards the bottom of it, but I just have layers so I can come in here and just pull off the top one and then uh, put it in the wash. So that's what we're doing. I do think, yeah, I do think you're right. I think this is her first time having kittens, uh, and her last time, of course. So um, that may contribute to some of the issues that we've seen, but I really do think that she's doing a great job overall. I can hear poor little Millet is right next door and he can hear me talking and whenever he can hear me talking, he will not stop meowing and asking to be let out. So. Poor little guy, but uh, just rest assured that uh, he does assuredly rest uh, after I'm not right next door talking. I try to kind of be quiet and get my stuff done during the day and let him take a nap. It's good for him to take a nap and to learn that stuff. And it's a tough lesson. DJ can't stand it. When she's at home and he starts meowing, she is a sucker for it. Every time she's got to go either hang out with him or take him out to the bedroom or, you know, follow him around the house and just consumes all of her time which is sweet, I think, you know, that's good for him too. And she's, she's wonderful that way. But uh, I think I take a little bit more of a tough love approach, you know, like the, the guy's got to learn to take a nap and be on his own once in a while. Not, not for, you know, all day or anything, but, you know, for a little while and he can deal with it. So uh, I'm trying to teach him a lesson about, you know, calming down and taking a nap. And uh, he's trying to teach me a lesson about uh, yelling, I think. <laughs> He definitely wants to come out and play with the other kittens some more. Yeah, I think in that way it is like raising a human child and that, you know, you've, you've often it's like cliche to have one parent that is a little stricter in trying to teach their kids some important lessons and the other one who just, uh, you know, wants to give them everything and spoil them all the time regardless of the consequences. And uh, that's, that's definitely me and DJ when it comes to Millet, so. Uh, Revolt, yeah, if you just rewind a little bit, Millet was at the whole beginning. It might have been a little pixelated, uh, and I apologize. We'll, we'll do better next time, but I really wanted to get this out while they were all playing in the bathtub together, so. Uh, if you want to see Millet and the Oranges on this close-up rewind, if you want to see Millet and the Oranges in general, check out the regular Kitten Academy live stream. I'm sure they will all leave the office soon and be on the regular Kitten Academy live stream. And if you want to see these kittens, they are also on the Kitten Academy live stream all day. I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm sorry again that, that I'm still, you know, there's still technical issues that uh, I'd like to try to solve on our end by using a whole different way of doing it, but I haven't had time to get around to that. And there's still technical issues on YouTube side that I can't do a thing about. Um, so, you know, I'm doing uh, as much as I can, but I still want to apologize uh, that things aren't perfect yet. We'll uh, gradually approach that perfection. And uh, just a big reminder, if you want video that is pretty good, pretty consistently, uh, that's the regular Kitten Academy live stream. We, we do our best to keep that going at 4K and, uh, you know, all the time. So... All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks for meeting the kittens with me. Thanks for watching the other uh, kittens with me. And uh, I will, like I said, uh, you know, next time we'll do, we'll, at the best, we'll do one of those zombies close-ups where uh, I record in advance, and then we know the video will be okay. Uh, I mean, at the least, yes. Okay, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Oh, I should have mentioned Port is at her spay today, so that's why we're not seeing her. She's at the vet getting her spay. I'm sure she's doing great.